Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So today we're going to be taking a look at this radio which is a GD73. It's a FM analog and DMR handheld single band. It uh, covers from 406 up to 470 megahertz. And as you can see from uh, uh, from the video here, uh, it's got an inbuilt antenna and it is really small. I'm actually quite impressed with this. So let's have a quick look around uh, the features that we get on the uh, on the radio so on here on the left hand side we have a we have a PTT button has a nice little click I have a uh, uh, it's a torch button by the looks of it I think there's a little LED in the top here a white LED uh, then obviously we have the uh, display here a couple of function buttons uh, up and down menu and escape so there's not not many buttons but I uh, don't suppose you really kind of need need too many buttons if you're just going to be changing zones uh, on the right hand side we have up and down um, I believe this is for the volume control and then we have the power button here uh, on the top as mentioned earlier we have the little white LED there's a status LED here as well um, I'll show you that in a moment and next to it we have like this little flap we can just open that up uh, have a look and this is going to be for uh, the headphones uh, the battery itself just it comes off quite nicely just undo the two clips pull the two clips down and the battery comes out the battery that comes with it is a 2600 milliamp hour battery at 3.7 volts. Now in the box it did actually come with um, a belt clip which attaches here. I haven't attached it just yet. But uh, also on the bottom here uh, we have a USB connection. Now this is great. This is actually used for charging the radio and it's also used for programming as well. So you don't need any special programming cable. In fact, they do actually provide a programming cable with it. And the programming cable is this. It is exactly the same and it's also the charging cable. Okay, so let's, uh, let's turn it on and have a look. You can see the keys are actually backlit, which is really nice. So uh, if you're operating this in the dark, then it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, as I said before, the side buttons here, they operate the volume. And then the buttons here will just change through the channels on your selected zone. Pressing the menu button. I've only got one zone programmed in here at the moment. So these hotkeys here can be programmed for a short press and long press. You can do that in the, in the CMS software. Let's, uh, let's give this a go. This is M0 DQW test. This is M0 DQW testing. This is M0 DQW testing. I was just doing a quick test through my local open spot. I think one of the good things about this radio is that it's uh, extremely small, it's, it's very compact and it's going to be one of those radios which is going to be very useful uh, for using around the home and basically using with your hotspot I think. so. So overall, I'm, uh, I'm actually quite impressed. Okay, so there we go. This is the GD73. So let's take a look at the software that we can download from the Radio Oddity website. Um, this is the latest version as of today, uh, version 1.02. And if you download the package and then uncompress it, you're going to see this content here. So the first folder is documentation where you have uh, extended user manual there as a, as a PDF. It looks like it's already uh, as another one here for for other languages if, uh, if you don't want English. Uh, we also then have the GD73 software version uh, so let's go ahead and install this so I'm just going to right mouse click run as an administrator I'm going to run that anyway ok 
okay so let's just click launch and okay that's worked fine uh, what you're also probably going to want to do is install the USB driver so if you select the USB driver folder right mouse click run as administrator click yes uh, just click save here it doesn't matter where this saves it, it should find it click save then you get a little notification to say the driver install is complete and now you're good to go you can now go ahead and plug in your radio plug in the radio and turn it on and we can then run the GD73 software so this is the GD73 software I'm going to go ahead and just uh, read from the radio right now and we have a successful read so just to go through some of the information uh, on, on here, as you can see here, my software version actually on the radio itself is version 1.01. .01. So I'm gonna cover going through how to upgrade the firmware as well in a moment. So let's take a look at what we've got on the CPS. So base information is uh, this information here. We've got frequency range. My radio cam shipped programmed for 446. Uh, I changed mine to 406 to 470. Uh, and it's it says here that the data is gonna be reset. Well, that's, that's fair enough, because when you first plug it in, it's not gonna have anything in it. Uh, over to general settings. Now, this is quite important. Uh, your radio ID, if you're gonna be using this on a DMR network, then you need to make sure that you use your registered radio ID here. Uh, you can also put a radio name in. Obviously, I've just put my call sign. I'm not going to go through every single setting on here because pretty much, if you're familiar with programming DMR radios, it's pretty much the same. Uh, we've got alert tones. Uh, I turn mine off because I find them annoying, <laughs> but obviously you can leave yours on. Uh, buttons. This is, uh, was as I mentioned earlier when I was showing you the radio, um, you can program the P1 and P2 buttons um, with a short press or long press now you can do it actually on the radio or you can do it here in the software um, so you can choose whether you want uh, how many seconds a long press duration is I think by default it's uh, two seconds and then you've got side button one side button two which refer to p1 and p2 a short press here for me will change the zone uh, on p1 and on p2 it will change the power level um, uh, a long press it's not going to do anything on P1 for me because I've got none selected there uh, but then on long press on P2 or side button 2 it's going to put it into monitor mode which I believe is a promiscuous mode if you're uh, familiar with that it will listen to all talk groups so if you're going to be using this with like a, a hotspot for example now if you're going to be using this with a hotspot for me I'm using it with an open spot 2 I needed to have at least one digital contact so I've got TG9 uh, I've also put in T, uh, TG9999 uh, as a private call uh, this allows me to use the inbuilt echo feature within the open spot 2 uh, just by selecting a channel which has that talk group assigned to it uh, for all others that I'm going to use, uh, it would just be TG9. You'd also need to create an RX group. Um, the RX group would just contain the TG9 contact that we created before. And in your zones, this is where you can add in the channels that you've made. Obviously, you can't do this unless you've made the channel. So let's just skip down to where it says channel information. I'm going to go to my open spot 2. Um, so obviously you can give it a name, you can give it a receive and transmit frequency. Obviously you want to make sure that you're selected on digital. And you can obviously change the power here between low and high power. Um, because the radio itself is just going to be used around the home, I'm going to keep it to low power. Over here on the right hand side I'm going to uh, select my TG9 talk group. I know with the open sport it doesn't matter which, uh, which slot you use but I'm using slot 1. The colour code in this channel will need to match what you've set your hotspot to so you'd need to go into your hotspot settings and just have a quick look to see which colour code you've got configured. Uh, I've also got an RX group list here, I've set it to group 1 because when it's uh, on a group call you want to make sure that you can actually hear what's coming back from the hotspot. That's pretty much it, so you can just save that information and download it to the radio if you wanted to. Whereas for me, I actually created another channel called Echo. Now this is because I wanted to be able to listen back to um, my audio as a test just to make sure it was working. So I named it OS2 Echo, put in the frequency, set the power to low, obviously made sure that the mode was digital. 
the TX contact was TG9999 um, on slot one and color code two. Doesn't need an RX group list because this is actually a private call, so it will it will come back to you anyway. That's pretty much how you can set up a channel quickly to work with a hotspot for the GD73. Now I've also got an all-star node which works on FM. So if I wanted to create an FM channel, then I could just click add, make sure it says analog, uh, create a channel name. For example, I could call this all-star. I could then put in the frequency, 434.100, put in the right frequency, 434.100. Uh, I only need low power. You can obviously choose between 12.5K and 25K channel spacing. Now I set my all-star node to only receive and transmit with a CTCS tone of 67 hertz. So you can go ahead and uh, choose it if that's what you need to do. Obviously you can configure this to work with a, with a local repeater. Okay, so what you may notice now on my zone one, previously I'd open spot two and uh, open spot two echo uh, as part of zone one channels. Now we've got here an available channel. This is the all-star channel that I made. Now I wanna add that over to my zone one list. And then when it's downloaded to the radio, it will then be selectable within zone one. So to download back to the radio is quite easy. Obviously make sure that your radio is on, make sure the USB cable is plugged in, hit the download button or write button and click OK. You'll see the little bar graph going up. And then you'll be presented with a little dialog that says program successfully. And as you heard there, the radio reboots as well. OK, that's pretty much it. Right, so what I want to look at now is actually upgrading the firmware because as I mentioned before, the firmware in this particular radio is 1.01, but the latest is 1.02. So I'm going to install the USB upgrade tool. Okay, and then I'm going to run it. We're going to browse for the uh, firmware. Select the bin file 1.02. Now at this point you need to put your GD73 into firmware download mode. Uh, the best thing to do is to unplug the cable, power the whole thing off, and hold your PTT button and then tap the power button. Now if it's successfully gone into firmware download mode, the status LED on the radio will be red and the display itself, the LCD, will be off. Now at this point, you can now go ahead and plug in the USB cable. Okay, so I have the USB cable plugged in and the status LED is red. So what I'm now going to do is click the right button. And once it's finished flashing the new firmware, you'll get a little message to show on the screen saying right flash successfully. So just click OK and you can then close the USB upgrade tool. At this point you want to unplug the cable from your radio and you want to then press the power button to then restart the radio. Okay, so once the radio is rebooted, just plug in your cable and then restart the GD73 software and do a quick read. Okay, so it is now successfully read back from the radio and we can now confirm that we're using software version 1.02. So there we go, that's upgraded the GT73 firmware as well. Anyway guys, I hope you like this video. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description of where you can purchase this radio from. And uh, if you've got any questions, drop them down below. And if you own this radio, let me know what you think. Um, I know that there are some issues with this radio, uh, which I'm not really going to cover in, the, in this video because uh, firmware changes all the time. So uh, by the time that this video comes out, it could be that the, the issues have been fixed. Um, but uh, when it comes to things like contact lists, um, which is useful for displaying uh, people's names rather than their DMR ID. Um, I think that's something that they may be looking at, um, but uh, fingers crossed we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get some cool features with this, uh, with this new radio. Anyway, until the next video guys, you take care and I'll see you in the next one. 
Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a quick video just to let you guys know that I've just launched a Patreon page. If you have a look at the link down in the description, you'll be able to visit this page and uh, see if it's something you might be interested in. Um, I've got a couple of tiers on there at the moment. The first is a, a VIP early access tier, uh, $2 a month. Uh, this will allow you to watch any of my content up to 48 hours before I release them fully onto the YouTube platform. And the second tier that I have is VIP Early Access Plus. This is at $5 per month and this allows you to have the 48 hours access before general release of new videos and also you can have your name or your YouTube channel in the credits at the end of every video while you are subscribed as a patron. If you've got any other ideas about uh, other tiers that I could possibly introduce, I had thought about maybe doing some kind of support tier, uh, whereas if, you, uh, if you're contributing uh, enough, a certain amount, then, then you'll be able to ask me private questions about uh, issues that you may have with your equipment and uh, ask for my advice on how to resolve issues. Whether you're aware or not, I also have a Twitter page. Uh, I'll leave the Twitter handle up on the screen now. Uh, so please go ahead, follow me. Uh, send me a tweet. If I follow you back, you can DM me. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you again.